morning. So we continue to talk about relationships. We covered last week and, and today we're talking about relationships. It's about building trust and rebuilding trust. Listen, that affects all of us. All of us. Learning how to trust our spouse, learning how to trust our kids, learning how to trust those around us. Some of us may have had bad examples of growing up of what trust looked like. And boy, sometimes we just have a hard time doing it. But it's something that we have to do because it's vital to our relationships. Learning to trust others, and especially our spouse. In the military, pilots are taught to, tr to trust their, their instruments. Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Patton was going, it was flying his F-15 during a desert storm. The very first night that we were delivering uh, shock and awe to Saddam Hussein. Him and a squadron of F-15s were, were supporting a bombing run uh, with the bomber squadron going over into Iraq to bomb a chemical plant. As soon as Jeff Patton crossed over into Iraq, a missile, a surface-to-air missile locked on to his plane, locked its radar onto his radar. He began to maneuver left and right, left and right, very hard turns, to break the lock and finally he broke the lock but what happened was another problem he was maneuvering so wildly and so so violently that he got dizzy the rocks in his head got kind of loose so what his mind was screaming to him was that he was in a 60 degree turn going banking left and he needed he needed to go down he needed to put the nose of the plane down but all of his instruments were telling him he was headed toward the ground 60 degrees. He's, he was in this argument between himself and his instruments of what to do. And his training kicked in. He just trusted his instruments. He leveled his wings off, pulled his plane up level, just missing the Rocky Mountains by 2,000 feet. He was in a downward spiral the whole time trusted his training, trusted his instruments. He trusted that they were right, and his mind was telling him the wrong thing. It wasn't long before he realized, had he not pulled up at that exact moment, within three seconds, he would have crashed into the side of the mountain. Three seconds. Listen, sometimes in our relationships, our mind and our heart sometimes is screaming the wrong thing. Sometimes it's telling us to do something that we know that we should not do. Why don't we just trust God? He's our instrument. His principles are the one that's reflecting back to us. He's our navigation system. He's the one that tells us this is the way that you live it. This is the way that you do it, and you'll get it right, and you'll be happy if you do it this way. Why do we always want to doubt that? Why do we always want to second guess what God is trying to, uh, to tell us to do? Listen, rebuilding trust, for, for us, it depends on us trusting God first. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 16. Book of Luke, chapter 16. Trust is the glue of life. It's the most essential ingredient in effective communication. It is the foundational principle that holds all relationships. Relationships is what Stephen Covey said. We see in Luke chapter 16. Now Jesus is talking about being trustworthy with money. But we want to understand that there's a principle here that we can grasp out of this and apply it to the rest of our life. Jesus says this in verse 10. He says, Whoever can be trusted with very little, can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be, uh, be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with more riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you the property of your own? Let's pray together. Father God, today, a principle stands out in us, God, that you trust us with small things 
so that we can build up the Lord's things. Even in our relationships, God, we begin very small and build up. Lord, you know your people today. God, you know what each one have experienced in life and where they're going and where they've been and what they're going through right now. God, you know that far better than I do and anyone else. Father, I pray that you speak to them through your word. Speak through them today. Teach them how to rebuild trust, how to build it for the first time even. God, that you may be glorified, and God, that they find the strength to carry on and find the hope and the happiness they did desire in their relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. So trust is defined as a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, or the ability of someone or something. Now, let's be honest. We've all broken trust at some point. Maybe with our parents. Maybe with, with our children. Maybe, uh, maybe as a, with a friend or a classmate. Uh, maybe it was a small thing. But sometimes it's big things in life. So we all kind of fit in this same boat together. And in our relationships, particularly that relationship of marriage, listen, we have, to, we have to understand not only how vital trust is, but once it's broken, how do we rebuild that? How do we rebuild it? See, the most expensive thing in the world is trust. It can take years to build and just a matter of seconds to break and every moment afterwards to repair. That's expensive. There are several truths about trust in relationships that couples should learn to grow stronger bonds. The first truth is this. Trust must be founded on the principles of God. Trust must always, listen Christian, trust must always be founded on the principles of God. We invest trust in each other based on the fact that God is completely trustworthy and has established a moral code of absolute truth to guide our relationships. See, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all of your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. We have a reliable God who is our navigation system, who gives us truth, who gives us hope that we can get it right even if we messed up. God is trustworthy and he is the foundation on which we build healthy and holy relationships. God delivered the moral code relationships to Moses back over in the Old Testament. Those Ten Commandments, you remember those? The first four are about our relationship with God. <clears throat> the next six are about our relationship with one another. God values relationship. God is the one who lays the foundation of trust based on his character. He established an expected morality that will build healthy, meaningful relationships, fulfilling marriages and strong family bonds. If we can only rely on God, if we would only trust in him to get all these other things right first. Listen, we have, to, we have to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to him to really say, God, I'm trusting you in this. I blew it. I did it. I didn't do the right thing, but God, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. God, would you give me the strength? God, would you teach me how? Because I really don't know. Building trust, taking those steps, always begins with God first. It's not in our own willpower. It's not in what we can do. It's not in how good we can be. It's how good God already is. And trusting him. Listen, following God's plan will impact our lives. Trusting him with goodwill, his goodwill and compassion. Trust within relationships can be strengthened by following the values, values that God has established. As long as God, couples adhere to God's values of honesty and truth and morality, trust encompasses the bonds of marriage and prevents outside influence from infiltrating and violating the fragile trust between mates. 
Trust is broken when one or both partners in a relationship divert from the governing principles of God and formulate a belief of self-entitlement and the actions that follow that. Anytime we start believing, I deserve something better than this, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. When God brings people together, it is amazing the great things he, he can bring. He can work through our lives and in our relationship. When we say, oh, God, I've got a better plan, we're headed for trouble. As long as couples adhere to God's values, great things can happen. Trust is broken. If a partner says, listen, God, I think something better is in there, out there for me. Listen, I've even heard men say, I'm just not happy in my marriage. <laughs> and I believe God wants me to be happy, so it's okay for me to leave. Listen, the Bible says in Ephesians verse 5, chapter 5, verse 28, 29 says, In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. Husbands, you are to love your wives just like Jesus loves the church. Has Jesus ever turned his back on the church? Never. Never. That's a great responsibility. But a responsibility in the power of God we can live out. Is it always easy? No. Wouldn't be fun then. <laughs> we always need a little challenge. Oh, but listen, listen, listen. God is more concerned about your holiness than your happiness. God is always more concerned about your holiness than your happiness. God's principles of trust produces love. Yet when, when people choose to act selfishly, doubts arise and, and trust begins to fragment. <laughs> I like what Dr. Henry Cloud said. He says, deception is the only thing that cannot be worked through because it denies the problem. When trust is broken or doubts cloud the mind of a marriage partner, painful consequences arise and communication is disrupted. See, trust does not offer any certainties about other partners' actions or attitudes. However, trust is the virtue that's required to form and maintain lasting relationships. So the question comes down, are you allowing God to govern the trust you invest in your relationship? In your relationship, are you allowing God to be number one? Are you, is he your foundation? Is he your navigation system? Is he, are you in covenant with him in your marriage, in your relationship? Are you in covenant with God? Or is it just a contract between you and a lady or you and a man? Our faith in God is reflected in our personal core values, and our values reveal much about our trustworthiness in our marriage. See, when we violate our values, we lose the privilege of other people's trust. And boy, I am echoing really bad. I sound like God up here. <laughs> Man, I want them to come back next Sunday. I don't want to scare them all off, you know. You see, when we violate our values, we lose the privilege of other people's trust. And we even begin not to trust ourselves. Oh, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. We need God to guide us and keep our values, keep our values as primary so we can, we can be people who are trustworthy. I want you to be able to trust me. Will I ever let you down? There's always that opportunity. There's always that chance. Will you ever let me down? There's always that chance that you will. But we still have to trust one another. We still have to trust one another. Proverbs 30, verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. The second truth is this. Not only do we need God and let God be the foundation, let God be the navigation, let God be, be the one who brings us together on his principles, and that's how we maintain and rebuild trust first with God. The second truth is this, that trust is bonded by truth and unconditional love. 
truth is the master key which unlocks the freedom of trust in order for, for couples to grow in love and respect. Truth. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6 tells us, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. That we can be truthful with one another. Without truth and honesty in marriage, trust doesn't really exist. Couples must work together to have this safe line of communication, to feel that they can share their, their thoughts and their feelings and, and insecurities with one another without the fear of rejection. One of the hardest things a couple have to, has to do and work through is this fear of rejection, their own insecurity. If I tell him this, then will he reject me? If I tell her this, will she reject me? Because we want to be honest, but we don't want to be rejected. See, marriage partners will dodge complete transparency. If, if they fear the other partner will retaliate, through arguing or blaming or punishing them. See, retaliation undermines the trust-building process. Well, if you did it, I can too. So, so, men, if your wife wouldn't spend $1,000 on a credit card and didn't tell you and was trying to keep it secret, and it comes out and you're angry, don't you go spend $1,000 to retaliate. I know that gun looked pretty good, but... And it was on sale. <laughs> but you did it for the wrong reasons. Marriage partners will dodge that honesty that's needed. See, we shouldn't avoid telling the truth and confronting uh, things that are lies with our partners. They, they have to be dealt with. This must be done with a focus on healing and restoration, not getting even. If not, a couple will sort through, through feelings and breaches in, in truth and, and, and do harmful things that will either complicate or kill their marriage. How many times people handle things the wrong way? So they're upset about something in their marriage. Rather than sitting down and being honest with it, they go out and get drunk. You know what all the, you know what getting drunk does? Just complicates the problem. When you sober up, the problem's still there. Still there. And you may have a DUI to go along with it. And that'll cost you ten grand. You, you see there's no there's no crutch to fall on. It's just be honest. Trust and truth go hand in hand. We see in verse 10 that we read, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. You remember, well, maybe when you first started dating, you used to begin to put those little, those little blocks of trust out there just to see how far it would take you. You, you begin to, 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 to just lay down the foundation of a relationship with them. Trust them with a little bit, and then you trust them with a little bit more, a little bit more, and before you know it, oh, I'm in love this week. <laughs> it's kind of how it is. When you build trust and you rebuild trust, it always starts with small things. Small things that lead up to larger. See, deception is a huge obstacle to building trust and quite often a trust killer. If you, are, if you are living a life of deception, in other words, if you are hiding things, if you're doing things that your spouse doesn't know about and you don't want them to know about because they would be angry with you, you know what? Just stop. If you want a healthy marriage, you want to be happy in life, you really want to find the fulfilling joy, that, just stop. Stop. We have to quit deceiving one another for trust to grow and to, to find some anchorage. Partners must not keep secrets and not practice deception with friends and co-workers and with money or with credit cards, maybe with classmates or family. 
You, full, you fill in the gaps there for you. I, I like what Rachel Hawthorne said. She says, deception may give you what you want for the present, but will always take it away in the end. You can lie, and you can cheat, and you can deceive, and you may be happy with that for a little while, but it will come crashing down on you. It will find you out, and boy, what a fall. Trust is the bedrock of a strong, healthy relationship. And listen, and trust will grow and create strong bonds of connection as couples are truthful. See, trust, trust means that you have faith and confidence in your partner. See, trust is an earned virtue, and it is priceless to marriage and relationships. You have to trust your children, but you know what? Just, you don't trust them with everything just right now. You don't trust your eight-year-old with a new car or even the old car. And maybe even not the four-wheeler. Their bicycle, yes. Trust starts small, and those responsibilities start small, and they build up. But, oh, goodness, it's, trust is priceless. The third truth that we find is that trust is the framework of healthy relationships. A healthy relationship will always have trust. Always. The infrastructure of a marriage is formed and framed on the virtue of trusting others and being a reliable person. Are you a reliable person? Are you a trustworthy person? See, verse 10 says, whoever can be trusted with a little can also be trusted with a lot. So if you're given a little for a while and you, you, you find that you're trustworthy, with, well, then you get a little bit more, then a little bit more, a little bit more. And more freedom. Proverbs 31 verse 11 says, The heart of her husband trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. Something about that partnership. Think about the skyline of New York City. I'm a country boy through and through. I don't live in the city and I hope I never do. But I like to visit the city. I'd like to visit there, but I wouldn't want to live there. New York City, skyline, beautiful, tall buildings, skyscrapers with, with all the reflective glass that just shows all things around. Oh, and at night when the, they light them up, it's beautiful. But, but, but those skyscrapers, the infrastructure is not in the lights and in the glass. If you could take that glass off and you begin to take the sheetrock off of the walls, you begin to see the infrastructure. And it's not very aesthetic. It's not very appealing. The infrastructure goes way into the ground. Big eye beams huge red iron eye beams with huge bolts holding those together. Concrete everywhere, reinforcement steel. Tons and tons and tons and tons of steel holding it together. If you could pull those walls off, what would you see? All the, the, the skeleton of that building. Well, you see, trust in a marriage is kind of like the skeleton of that building. It has to be there. It's not always pretty. Sometimes it takes a little a little work to get it there. But the only way for a healthy, happy relationship is if that structure of trust is there. It has to be there. You see, relationship and marriages have a similar pattern of framework. Within every relationship, there's an infrastructure of trust fastened together by truth and honesty and loyalty, wrapped in intimacy and compassion and anchored in healthy communication and fortitude. The entire infrastructure of trust is wrapped in love. Like a towering, strong building, trust in a relationship does take time to build. Listen, those skyscrapers are not built overnight. 
They're not built in a week <laughs> or two. It may take a year, two years to build those beautiful structures, those architectural wonders. Listen, your marriage, your relationship, building trust in that takes time. If you've been a person that broke trust, you breached the trust in your relationship, understand, don't expect your spouse just to welcome you back in with open arms. Everything's good, you know. I've been clean for a month now. Everything's wonderful. No. It takes a little while. Don't get over anxious. You're building a skyscraper marriage. It takes time to get down to the root, to get down to the very core and begin to build it up on trust, on a solid foundation that Christ can give you. Listen, if you've been the one offended and violated, don't, do not keep reminding them of the time they messed up. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says, Love is not easily angered, and it keeps no records of wrongs. You cannot continue to remind someone of their mess up if you anticipate moving forward. Because all you're doing is looking back. You're just looking back at the time they, they really blew it. You're looking back at the time that they didn't get it right. Yeah, it fragmented a lot of stuff, but they're trying to build up. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to come back and make things whole. Now, you have a decision to make. Either you're going to work with them, and you're going to build it back up, or you're just going to quit. What would God want you to do? See, trust is established over time. And gradually through a series of successful experiences where reliability is tested true. Rabbi Dor Heller said this, says, Create a safe emotional space for your spouse. If you are not actively working to build a safe emotional space, then you are probably building an unsafe one. I don't know what goes on in your home. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. That's between you, your spouse, and the good Lord. But we know that he is key first to, to build a healthy, happy relationship, to build the trust. He is the foundation. And listen, there's just some key things that we need to do. And one is forgiveness. There are five keys that link the infrastructure of trust and relationships. And it's actually like an acrostic of trust, the word trust. The T, here it is, time. A healthy relationship requires investing time to learn each other. One of the things when a couple comes to me and, and we're talking, they're talking marriage and all, they're all happy and all excited about the wedding and all that good stuff. I ask, how much time do you spend together? Talking about communication. Sometimes it's five minutes, ten minutes a day. Sometimes 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes because it's work schedule. So, I, 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 listen, if you get 20 to 30 minutes a day just to communicate and talk, you're doing okay. You're working towards something. You're doing good. Stick to it. You see, time is valuable to rebuild trust. The second we see is reliability. Couples need to feel they can safely, safely count on one another. Reliability, putting those small elements of trust and building upward. The third thing is understanding. The greater understanding, the more likely it is that spouses will develop unconditional love. Communication helps bring understanding. The fourth thing is the S in trust, sacrifice. See, when partners exhibit behavior in which they sacrifice something for the good of the relationship, trust develops. So, guys, if, you're, if your wife needs you to be home the weekend and you have a hunting trip planned, but you give up the hunting trip to stay home with her, you just want a gold star. <laughs> you see, that's sacrifice. 
Ladies, if, you're, if you had that big shopping trip planned, mm -hmm, he's meddling now. <laughs> with the, you wanted to get away with the girls. It's a girls' night out and your husband's at home. And he really needs you to be home. He wants you to be home. He hasn't seen you much. And he just, he just wants to spend time with you. And you give that night up to those girls to stay at home. Two gold stars. You see, sacrifice. Sacrifice builds trust. The fifth thing and the last in the, is the T in trust is thankfulness. This means that recognizing and appreciating the partner's efforts Avoid taking each other for granted. Oh, my goodness. If we in our marriages can just simply not take one another for granted and really appreciate the person that we're married to. Because, you know, when you first get married, it's all, woo -hoo -hoo. he's the best, she's the best, and, oh, the flowers come for Valentine's Day and all those things. Listen, that's good. But we're humans, and we're getting, that kind of fades over time. Anita and I are fixed to spend 30 years together. Next month is 30 years. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> i just be honest. I don't know how she did it. Keep her laughing a lot, I guess. But, but true thankfulness. Man. When I begin to imagine all the things she does, not just for me, but for our kids and for our house and for her career, oh, wow, I'm overwhelmed. Listen, men, I'm going to tell you something. Your wife gets neglected many, many, many times by you. It's not necessarily the flowers that she gets or the candy that she gets for, the, for, for Valentine's Day. It's you spending time with her. It's you appreciating her. She has a task. I don't know how women do it. God gave them the gift of multitasking, but to have a career, to, to have education, to keep up with the kids, to, to, to do supper, to do house, all these things, and to keep up with you. <laughs> you like child number four. Yeah. I'm like child number four sometimes. How they do that. Is remarkable. We cannot take that for granted. We want to build trust, we build thankfulness. And the fourth thing we see out of this passage is trust is fragile and at times it must be rebuilt. Let's just be honest. I'm not picking on anybody. This is just true. Trust is so fragile. Sometimes small things and sometimes big things. Trust requires the investment of faith and confidence and one's reliability to extend him grace and love. Trust is so fragile. Verse 11 says, So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who would trust you with true riches? If you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? See, trust is vital to our lives and in all areas. Ernest Hemingway said it this way. He said, the best way to find out if you can trust anybody is to trust them. Isn't that like a no-brainer? We want this magical formula. Brother Kevin, tell us this magical formula where I can rebuild my trust. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I need it right now. <laughs> trust them. There's no guarantees, but trust them. One small step at a time. The only way trust to trust again after trust has been broken is to move past your own fear and work up the courage to trust the person. There's no instant formula to implement to make this happen in your relationship. Most of us remember when trust has been shattered, either when we, were been, we have broken trust or when other people have broken trust with us. One of the most different, difficult things to do is to forgive someone who has broken our trust and to begin to trust him or her again. Trust does not come with a guarantee. Always remember that. Trusting another person means we have risk. And we risk the disappointment again and again and again. But we must remember that trust is the infrastructure that we must have. For our marriage to be successful. Not only successful to be happy in our relationships. 
See, without trust, over time, relationships crumble and marriages dissolve. Here's a note of wisdom, if I have any. Listen, do not, do not bring broken bricks of trust from a previous relationship into a new one, or you will build the same insecure relationship infrastructure with a new relationship. In other words, don't carry all your baggage from one place to the next and dump it on that person and expect everything to be healthy and happy. It doesn't work that way. Ann ben Birch said this. Ann Birch told, told the testimony of a lady. I'm trying to hurry. One lady shared a valuable graph regarding phases of trust pertaining, pertaining to infidelity. So before disclosure of the affair, trust was high. After disclosure of an affair, trust plummets to an all-time low. Through sincerity, that's breaking all ties now with the third party, trust climbs to about 30%. Through ability, discussing the affair and answering questions and, and, and proven behavior, during this time, trust climbs another 30%. So now we're at 60%. Through durability, that's being faithful and open and honest, proven behavior over an extended period of time, one can regain trust. It takes time with work and proven behavior. Everyone is different. And there's no set time frame. But, but, but just that very first 30%, listen, it may take six months. It may take six months just to overcome and, and to move that far. So well, I want it faster. I, 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 want my, I want my marriage to work. I, listen, it takes time. Be patient. That first 30%. That next 30%, may take another six months, so now you're at a whole year. To get where you need to be may take another six months or a year. To actually overcome that broken trust and infidelity. But it can happen. To rebuild trust, we must have this capacity to forgive and give grace to trust again and the power that Christ gives. How do we rebuild trust? I'm just name a, a few things here. First of all this, the wounded spouse must share their pain. The other spouse must acknowledge that their hurt, they hurt them and caused a devastating experience. The second thing is this. Listen completely to one another with your heart and not just your head. Sometimes we just want to get angry. You just want to shut down. The third thing is this, be honest. What's left to hide? Just be honest. Honesty always comes. It, listen, it, it's going to sting at first, and, and they may get really, really mad, really, really mad. But you're clean, and you're clear. Fourth thing is avoid trigger words. Let's start with the start of conflict. You know, use non-blaming I statements like, you know, you did this, I feel. Bring these I statements in. Um, and don't, all, don't say always, must, never, and should. Those are all-encompassing words, and they back people in the corner, and they come out fighting. We also see, take responsibility for your actions. Don't blame someone else. Well, you did this, so because you did this, I did this. Come on, man up. Woman up, be responsible for your part. Be open, be open to see a counselor or a pastor. Sometimes you have to, you have to bring it out to a non-biased person and then help you begin to sort through. We also see, remind each other that you deserve open and honest answers to your questions. The next is choose to forgive. Allow time for emotions to catch up with your decision to forgive someone. 
Make the choice to love. Show grace and, and trust one step at a time. Oh, and this is real important. Set new relationship boundaries. The old ones didn't work. Set new relationship boundary goals and goals with the purpose to grow together in love. Listen, boundaries are not to punish someone. Boundaries are to reestablish trust. And sometimes the fence has to get a little smaller until trust is built and it grows a little bit larger each time. And the last thing, seek God personally and together. Everything, everything you do, if you truly want to build trust in your relationship and rebuild trust in your relationship, you need God to be right in the middle of it. You need God's help. Because it won't just happen. And if you're basing it on your own abilities and your own willpower, you're not going to get very far. You need God. What are you experiencing today? What are you going through? Has there been broken trust in your life? Maybe you're not, no longer with the person that broke trust with you. But you know what? You're still alive, and there's still a life. There's plenty of life in you to move forward. But you don't want to move forward carrying all of that baggage. You want to, you want to know that God, that, that you and God are right, but that you've healed up. That's, what, that's, that's why we have Celebrate Recovery. That's why Sarah is our, our, our ministry leader over Celebrate Recovery. Because you are valuable. Your, your life is valuable. What you're doing in your God wants to bring health and healing. And what CR does is just teaches you to get out of God's way to heal you teaches you to get out of God's way so he can do the healing. I'll be here in the front. My staff will be alongside of me. As we have a time of invitation, what is God leading you to do? Maybe you just need to come to this altar and pray. Maybe you just want to pray right where you're at. Whatever God is leading you to do, I invite you to do that. Let's pray together. Father God, today, God, life is hard. Relationships are hard. And Father, we don't always get it right. God, sometimes we just, we say the wrong thing, we do the wrong thing. God, sometimes we really, really blow it. God, we're trying to rebuild trust. And it's a challenge. God, today we pray that you indwell us. God, that you fill us. God, that we're not just reliving our failure, but God, we give it to you for forgiveness. And that you wipe us clean, God. And that you bring healing personally and as a couple. Father, I just pray today, Lord, that you be glorified. And every person that's here, those who are watching by internet, by YouTube, Father, we pray that you touch them by your word, by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together this morning.